Hey, hope you're doing all right. This is Chris, and in this tutorial, we're going to go over the basics of Apollo Client's Use Query Hook. So I've just got a, um, a Create React app started here, and then additionally, I've installed two dependencies, at Apollo slash client and GraphQL. So if you don't yet have those installed, take a second. You can pause the video, install those, and then start back up. So in our app.js, we can go ahead and get rid of all of this stuff. And let's just do an H1. And we're going to be using uh, Apollo Client's provided sandbox that gives us uh, a list of exchange rates. So we'll call this exchange rates. And we can hit save there. Nothing going to be too exciting, just exchange rates H1. So with Apollo Client, the first thing that we need to do is instantiate a new instance of Apollo client. And then we'll go ahead and pass that instance into an Apollo provider, which will wrap our entire application. So if you've used like Redux before or context, it's a similar idea where we have a top level component that has access to all of our data. And then um, by wrapping our application with that provider, all of the child components now have access to that data. So let's go ahead and get this set up. At the top, we can get rid of this uh, logo since we're not using it. And instead, we'll import Apollo client and in memory cache from Apollo client. And then above our app, we'll create a variable called client and we'll set it equal to a new instance of Apollo client. This is going to take an object with a URI. I'll post this in the comments so you can grab it. But this is just your GraphQL endpoint. So if you're using, if you're using like your own uh, GraphQL backend, then you would just put that as your URI here. And then We'll set cache equal to new in memory cache. The next step is to then pass this client into our application through a wrapper. So we're going to import Apollo provider. I'm then going to cut this div. I'm going to put in Apollo provider and paste, uh, paste my um, div back in. And then Apollo provider takes in a client, which we have defined up here. And so now when we save it, you're not going to see anything different in terms of UI, but we do now have access to this GraphQL endpoint and the data that is inside. So now let's go ahead and use that uh, use that use query hook to see some of this data. So we're going to create a new component in source. We'll call it exchange rates. And in here, I'm going to use my shortcut to uh, populate a new functional component. In addition to React, we are eventually going to need use state, so I'll import that now. And then to set up our use query hook, we're going to need two things. We're going to import use query and then GQL from Apollo client. Next thing we're going to do is set up our query. So best practice is to label your uh, query variables with all capital letters. So I'm going to call it exchange rates. And then with uh, GraphQL, you use backticks as part of its syntax. We'll then use the query that's already been set up. It's called get exchange rates 
And so this name is coming from the from the back end. Um, this query has already been named get exchange rate, so that I do have to use that. This part exchange rates I could call whatever I wanted, but uh, in order to know which query you're targeting, you need to make sure that the name matches up. So inside of get exchange rates, we have rates which takes an argument. And this is just which currency do you want as the like base comparison. So to start, we'll just hard code this as USD. I'm in the United States, so we'll do US dollars, but feel free to do any other currency that you want. And then from there, so this rates is going to give us an array. And so for each item in that array, we're going to grab the currency and we're going to grab the rate and the name. Now, since we have this built out, we can actually access and use this data. So uh, the use query hook gives us a couple of nice things and typically you're gonna use at least three. Loading, error, and data. And so we're pulling those off of the use query hook which is targeting our exchange rates query up here. So loading just tells you, do we have the data yet or not? Error, were there any problems along the way? And then data is once loading is done and we have the data, it's gonna be in this data variable. Another nice thing about Apollo Client is that it has intuitive UI design in mind. So we can say if loading, we'll just return a paragraph tag that says loading. And you could do like a spinner or something more sophisticated, but we'll just do this for now. And then inside here, let's just do a paragraph tag for now and do rates. We'll go here. And so if I save this, and let's refresh. Oh, it's not doing anything because I haven't imported exchange rates into app yet. So let's do that. Beneath exchange, uh, exchange rates H1, I've got it auto imported. Just make sure you have it imported at the top. And so now if we save, loading, rates will go here. So we, when we have rates will go here, that means loading is done and we have our data. Let's go ahead and split this so we can see them side by side. And close this down a little bit. All right, so in our exchange rates, let's actually do something with that data. First, let's go ahead and console log it to see what kind of data we're working with. So let's see if we've got anything yet. So there is our data object. And you'll notice too, you may not have even seen it loading. So it was a little bit more quick that last time. Um, so here are our rates. And we've got 212, we've got currency, we've got rate, name is null, let's see. So name uh, might be null for some of um, for some of our currencies. So in, in this case, let's go ahead and do this. Let's close this down. Um, let's go ahead and say that we're going to, we're going to filter our data. So we'll say data dot rates dot filter. And I'm saying rates here because th this is our data object which then has the rates array, and now I'm filtering that array. So we'll say for each rate, if the name, um, we'll say isn't null. We could probably shorten that by just saying rate.name, but let's see. This should work just fine. So we have 212. If we refresh, uh, and let's console log filtered instead. Now we have 169, cool. So let's go ahead and display this in a table. 
So here, let's go ahead and do table. And then we'll do a table row. And up here, table head. Oh, so this should be uh, table head. Forgot one. So table head, we have our table row and then our table data. Cool. So our data, these are gonna be our column headers. So we'll do, uh, we've got, we'll do name. We'll do currency and uh, and rate. And then beneath that, we'll do our body. And we're gonna map through filtered here. So our filtered array, so we'll do filtered.map. And for each item, we're gonna return so implicitly return with just the open parentheses. We'll do a row. And the data will be the item.name. The item.currency. And the item item dot rate let's go ahead and save that cool so there's our table it doesn't look awesome but you get the idea so we have our name currency and rate um, so something else that is um, cool about uh, about Apollo client is that we can dynamically update this currency here. So we can pass in variables that will allow us to dynamically update our query. So let's go ahead and do that. So now that we've successfully got our data here, we can close this out. We don't need to console log filtered anymore. And up at the top, let's create a new variable using the use state hook. So we'll say base currency and set base currency. And we'll set it default as United States so that we have something. You can set that again to whatever you want. So in order to make this work, what we need to do is at the top level, this get, get exchange rates. We are gonna let it know that is, it is going to be expecting a variable called currency, which will be a string that is required. So the dollar sign indicates that this is a variable. Currency is the variable name. And then this is the type. So it is going to be passed in as a string. And then this just means that it's required. And then here for our rates, instead of hard coding USD, we are going to pass in this currency variable. So I'm gonna copy it, delete USD and paste it. So now this is going to take whatever currency variable is passed in and query that instead. So how do we have access to that with the use query hook? Inside of use query, we have the query that we are, uh, that we're accessing here it also takes in an options object. So we'll open that up. And the first option that we'll pass in is variables. Variables is set to an object as well. And we are going to say that currency, our currency variable that we are passing in is going to be equal to base currency, which is here in our use state hook. Okay, so let's grab AZN for example. If we refresh the page,
Okay, a couple of things here. So one, we got our uh, data back, but this is something that I missed before. So we'll say that um, if data exists, then uh, we will set this variable. Oops. We'll set that variable there. Um, and then actually let's declare this above. So we'll say let filtered. And then if there's data, then we'll assign filtered there. Cool. Then Cool. Then what we'll do is to show that this can be updated, we'll just grab a different currency and replace it. So we should see all the rates change. So if I update this use state, now all the rates are different. Obviously, you don't want to go in and update the state manually. You want to allow your user to do that. So what we'll do instead is above our table, we're going to create a select. And inside of here, we'll do filtered dot map. And for each item, we're going to return an option with a key of we'll do item dot name of value of item dot currency. And then uh, for our option, we can do, you can do either one. I'm going to do item.name so you can like see the country that you're choosing. In our select, we need an on change. So we'll do handle select currency. And then up at the top, we'll define that const handle select currency. It's going to take in an event. And what we'll do is our, we'll set our base currency to e.target.value. So now we hit save. There is our uh, select tag. And let's give it, um, let's actually give this a default value. Because right now it's just going to the top option. Let's give it a default value of USD. Actually, not. we don't need to hard code it. We can set it to that variable. So base currency. So instead of hard coding USD, we'll just set it to this base currency variable here. So it's our US dollar. So now if we change this, Now we have our rates compared to the Thai bot or the Serbian dinar. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly, but you get the idea. So the use query hook is very versatile. You can just straight up query data. You can manipulate uh, the variables that you're passing in with that variable uh, option here. You can pass in multiple variables if your query is set up for that as well. So with Apollo Client, you have a lot of a uh, lot of really cool options. You can see down here errors assigned a value but never used. So what you could do as well is like if error, then console log error. Cool. Compiled successfully. So um, lots of really cool options. Uh, to work with. If you've got any questions, as always, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.